Oh, I'm Adrian Healy and the uh, company, delightful company of Alejandro Moreno, uh, Shaka Hislop, Ian Dark is standing by to join us. Big show to get to. We'll preview the Manchester Derby. We'll show you highlights of the U.S. women's national team and their victory against England. Before all of that, let's start with Serie A and look at the games this weekend. Remember, all of the games in Italy being played behind closed doors this weekend and there is one massive standout fixture it's Juventus against Inter it's second against third Lazio remember with their victory last week uh, leapfrogging Juventus two points in front but Juve have a game in hand Inter have two games in hand they're a further six points back uh, the odds makers uh, rate Juventus as uh, Pretty serious favourites to win. You would expect that perhaps at home in Turin, six to five. You can get eleven to five on the draw. Into twelve to five to go there and uh, get the victory. Juventus uh, went to Milan and won by two goals to one back in October. But it, it, it's in, it's very hard to see how the dynamic uh, is going to affect this one behind closed doors. Perhaps the home advantage taken away, Ali. Perhaps, but you just can't undermine the importance of people not being in the same. Mm. As professional players, we become creatures of habit. Yep. And there are certain things that you expect to have on the stadium. And in a game like this, you expect it to be full, to be mm. packed, to be full with energy and intensity. And, and, and so that adds to the value and the importance of the match for you mm. as a player. You, you feel it. You feel that intensity. You feel that energy. When that's not there, then you have to create it yourself. And it's so very difficult to do. It's, it's, it's unrealistic. Mm. It's not what you're used to. And yet, it's a critically important match for both teams. In particular for Inter, even though it's away from home, I, you just said it. It may mm. be an opportunity because there is no crowd for you to then generate your own intensity, your own energy, and win a game that you need to win to keep up. Mm. They are in danger, and, and you may say, well, they have two, uh, two games in hand. Well, but you still have to win those games. Mm. Those are not points in the bag already. And so... They are in danger of losing contact with Lazio and potentially Juventus if they lose this game. So Inter, even though they're away from home, they need to win. And if you're Juventus, this is the moment in which you make a statement. This is the moment in which you say, you know what? What's your pretenders here? Yeah. These guys, they think they're going to catch up. They're not going to catch up. We're Juventus. We have Cristiano Ronaldo. We have the players. We have the history. We are the team to win. Mm. Even with an empty stadium, I think this is all about Juventus and this is all about Cristiano and another big moment. No fans, no real negativity around them, no real positivity around the mm. home team in, in Juventus. And they are the ones who, who get the job done. I can also say, though, I can, I can spin around and say, well, because there are no Juventus fans in the stadium and they've been a little shaky, Juventus has, there isn't the anxiety that maybe things are not mm. going well for you early on in the match and now the fans get all anxious and they get after you and then you hear some boo birds or, or, or whatever the case may be that puts pressure on the home team. So mm. it, it really is a game about the quality out on the field because you're not going to get feedback one way or the other from the, from the stands. And so therefore, I, that, that's when I lean on Juventus because mm. I'm thinking, you know what? They are on paper the better team. Mm. Show it out on the field. It is the duel, of course, of the two ex-Chelsea coaches in Sarri and Conte uh, moving to the Premier League. Uh, this is what the top of the table looks like. Uh, the two Manchester clubs highlighted second and fifth City and United, and they meet in the Manchester derby at Old Trafford on Sunday. The odds makers have Manchester United as rank outsiders. You can get 4-1 to one on a United home win, 13-4 to four on the draw. City, 5-8 to eight odds on favourites to win. Let's bring Ian Dark into the conversation. Ian, I know you watched Manchester United in the FA Cup but last night in Derby. Uh, these are two teams banging form at the moment. United unbeaten in nine. City have won five straight. Yeah, and Manchester United have kept seven clean sheets. And as everybody's been saying, they do look a different team since Bruno Fernandes has come into the team. He's given them a spark. They've got a little bit of a swagger about them now. I'm hearing that Harry Maguire, who missed the derby game, he rolled his ankle in training. He's going to be fit for the game. So they're going to be more or less at full strength, except possibly without Aaron Wan-Bissaka at right back because he hasn't trained all week. So I doubt he plays. So that's one little weak point. Kevin De Bruyne not fit for Manchester City. But United have won two of the three meetings this season. Um, they're on a confident run. They've done well in the big games this year. There's a feeling they might be turning a corner. And I think those odds of, what is it, 4-1 to one against Manchester United mm. are quite tempting. I think they could possibly 
uh, get at least a point from this. Yeah, the odds do seem a little generous. Uh, Ian mentioned the meetings this year. Remember in the Carabao Cup, Manchester United winning that second leg 1-0 after they'd lost 3-1. But that Premier League meeting, only back on December the 7th at the Etihad, United winning 2-1. Uh, Ali, what are you expecting heading into this? Well, first of all, I love the commitment by Ian in saying, oh, well, you know, those odds are tempting. So they could maybe possibly get a point out of this. <laughs> They're so tempting that I'm not tempted. Um, I, I'll, I'll tell you this much. I, I really do think that while Manchester United have looked better with mm. Bruno Fernandes on the field, and I do think that they have taken a few steps forward, let's not forget where this team was. And so the bar was very, very mm. low, exceptionally low for Manchester United. And so any time that they do something well, it, it feels like, oh, hey, yeah. yes, we found something. There's no question that Bruno Fernandes is a good player. There's no question that they've looked better. But I can also tell you that if this is about the best versions of both teams, mm. there is no doubt that Manchester City is the team that should we win in this game. Now, the motivation for Manchester City, what, what is it? Well, I tell you, not only is it a rivalry, not only is it a derby, but it's the fact that it's been uncomfortable for you to play against Manchester United. And so maybe if you're Pep Guardiola, you're saying to your players, you know what? It's about, this. it's about time that we really send a message to them, to everybody in Manchester, to ourselves, mm. that we generate the sort of momentum that we want to continue towards the end of the season so that we are the sort of team that could potentially win Champions League, which is the goal that they have in mind. And in order to do that, Manchester City has to continue to play better. There is no doubt in my mind that Manchester City should go into Old Trafford, should be the favourite, and should win this game. For United, though, Shaggy, not just Bruno Fernandes. It's been a success. I think the signing of Juan Bissaka has been a success. They need more players yet. I think they're among the favourites to get Jadon Sancho, who will be leaving Borussia Dortmund. That would be an amazing sign if they had him and Bruno Fernandes operating, uh, operating behind Rashford you'd start to take them a bit more seriously. But I'm going to go on a limb here. I know Ali's, <laughs> Ali's <laughs> taking the mickey out of me a bit here. I think United <laughs> might win this game. All right. Yeah. I, just, oh, oh, yes. I, I, I was going to ask for predictions, so there you have it. 1-1 one, one for United to Ali. You, you're going down that 4-1 to route as well? <laughs> oh, I'm not. <laughs> and, and you can keep your audio on Igalo if you want to. And, and that, if, if that's what you want to depend on goals, then go ahead and do that. Yep. I'm going to take the squad from Manchester City, and I'm mm. going to take the best version of Manchester City. I think that's still better than most teams in Europe. All right, so you get the deciding vote, vote Shaq. Yeah, yeah I, I, as I said, there are any number of arguments you can make for United, but this is, is cities to lose. They, they've been the, the better of the two teams. I think this is about a lot of bragging rights for them. City win it. Mm. Well, of course, United in the thick of the race uh, to finish uh, top four. Of course, you might only have to finish top five to make the uh, Champions League. When you look at the latest uh, bookies' odds to finish top four, this is specifically United uh, now rank ranked 11 to four. Uh, Chelsea still ahead of them, four to five, and then the top three almost a shoe in according to the bookies. So. Look, he's starting to like United's chances. Ian, do you like United's chances of uh, uh, usurping Chelsea now and finishing top four? Well, Chelsea have got the advantage because they've got the points in the bag and you shouldn't underestimate that. But they've got a few injuries at the moment. I wonder if they're going to have to play uh, this young starlet, Billy Gilmore, this weekend. It was uh, got a lot of rave notices in midweek. But don't underestimate Wolverhampton Wanderers. They're mm. right in there. They've had a long season. They don't make very many mistakes and they've got an experienced squad. They won away at Tottenham and I wonder whether they are the dark horses in this top four race. What odds are they? Mm. Mm. <laughs> 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 Top four, Shaka, can you see it? Uh, for, for Wolves, yes. I, what about it. United? For, oh, for United. <laughs> he doesn't care about Wolves. Uh, yeah, no, well, for, for, for United, yes. All of a sudden, things have started to come good. Yeah. And, and again, this hinges on, on somebody else, namely yeah. Chelsea, yeah. and how they continue to stutter. Manchester United have got to keep whatever it is they've got going on going. Mm. Do I, do I put my mortgage on it? Nah. No, no, you're, you're reluctant it, to at this stage. Huh? Isn't it amazing that w with all the struggles and the criticisms and everything that we have seen from Manchester United, that they somehow yeah. still have an opportunity right? to be in the top four? And doesn't that speak very loudly about what the level, the real level of the Premier League has been this year? That mm. Chelsea, again, inconsistency is inconsistent as they have been. They still... Yes. Very much holding the cards as to who should be in the top four. 
look, I still think this is Chelsea, and, and, and I do believe that the fact that they have the points in the bag it, it weighs quite a difference here. But Manchester United have an opportunity, and that's much more than I think they could have hoped for given the struggles mm -hmm. throughout the course of the season. Yeah, they've almost been defying gravity, haven't they, Chelsea? Uh, resisting that falling out of the top four. They have Everton at home at Stamford Bridge. Uh, Carlo Ancelotti's first visit back to Stamford Bridge since being sacked as Chelsea manager back in 2011. Chelsea, uh, heavy favourites to win, uh, uh, Ian. Of course, coming off the cup win at home to Liverpool. Five to six, the bookies uh, rate them. Uh, do you see it that way? Uh, yeah, probably with Chelsea at home. I thought that was one of their very best performances of the season. I, I think, you know, it wasn't Liverpool's absolute full strength side, and I think their mind is now all unavailable. Mm. And that makes a difference. However, mm. Apparently, if you have Marcos Alonso, you have a chance. Right. <laughs> he's a goal scorer. Well, he's the guy scoring the goals for Chelsea. And I just, I, look, I, I do think that that does give you an idea as to what the struggles of Chelsea have been in the final third into who scores the goals. Who's mm. going to come up with the goods when he counts? And early on was Tammy Abraham. He's gone a little bit of missing for, for the, last few, the last few weeks or so. So Marcos Alonso has to be the guy that's going to score goals for Chelsea. I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, well, hold on a second. Is, is this really the team to trust? Mm. But I can't trust Everton, and I can't trust anybody else, so I'm, I'm going to go with Chelsea. And, and I just look at Everton as at a team that took a couple of steps forward under Carlo Ancelotti, but other, over the last couple of weeks, you have seen a team that wasn't really good enough to get past Arsenal, even though they had the chances mm. to do so, and couldn't, get, couldn't quite get past Manchester United. And I think this is what the story of this game is going to be, that they aren't going to be good enough to quite good enough to get past Chelsea. They beat Chelsea at Goodison Park. That was early December, though, 3-1. Yeah, and, and the thing with, with, with Chelsea, and listen, all things being equal, Chelsea should have this wrapped up and win the three points, no question. But they continue to stutter. Mm. I was just looking at, at their previous games. Bayern, they, they lost it to Bayern. You yeah. lose to Manchester United at home. Um, you do beat a weakened Liverpool in the Cup. Maybe that boosts your confidence somewhat. You go on the road and, and, and draw with Bournemouth. And you're just not quite sure which Chelsea are, are going to show up. I think Everton gets something out of this. Mm. I'm going to sit on the fence and go for a draw. Oh, goodness. <laughs> we like it. We love it. Uh, Come if you on. Miss, uh, draw. If you ever miss an edition of the show, uh, the audio version, our podcast, available on a day daily basis. Uh, you can find that on our podcast centre, also via Apple. Remember that cloak of invincibility Liverpool have been wearing all season long? Uh, uh, it's gone. Well, it hasn't been entirely been removed, but there's certainly a tear. Well, it's I gone. Think, <laughs> I, think, I think it's fair to say that. Uh, three defeats in their last four in all competitions, in three different competitions, including, of course, their first league defeat at the hands of Watford. They have Bournemouth at home trying to get back on track this weekend. Liverpool, as you might expect, 1-4 to four on Bournemouth, 10-1 to one outsiders to pull uh, what would be a massive upset at Anfield. However, Ian, Liverpool looks set to have to do without goalkeeper Allison, not just for this game, but also for the Champions League return leg against Atletico Madrid. How big a blow might this be? Well, it's quite a big blow, um, particularly with the Atleti game in mind in, in midweek. They certainly would want him there for that. I mean, Bournemouth at home tomorrow. Let's put it in context. Yeah, Liverpool have lost a bit of form. I think they've lost a bit of energy. I think they've got a little bit complacent. Understandable. They've been so far in front for so long. But uh, let's look at it. They've won every home game in the Premier League. I think Bournemouth have lost their last five on the road. But they did win at Chelsea. And Eddie Howe says they are starting to look a bit more like their old selves. But I still think Liverpool will have too much for them. I know you were part of the discussions earlier in the week. You two, our good friend Steve Nichols said this is the big one for them to get to get back on track, to rediscover the winning habit with the with the first eleven. Well, it becomes the big one because of the choice made by Jurgen Klopp in mm. essentially saying FA Cup, thanks, but no thanks. That's pretty much with the team that he put out there. He was essentially saying, look, we got to move forward and and look for other options and and other players to participate in this game because we think that. What really matters now is uh, Champions League. Now, in order to generate some momentum, given the struggles that they have had 
coming into this game, yes, I do think you put yeah. out your best team against Bournemouth because you want to generate some continuity. You yeah. want to create that energy. You want to create that intensity that will be so necessary in order to be successful against Atletico Madrid in the midweek. You don't just go from struggling, 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 and then jump into Atletico Madrid and say, yeah, we're ready to go. That's not quite how it works. This is a team that they've had some issues. It's well documented over the last couple of weeks. Now it's important against Bournemouth that you give yourself that confidence and that momentum in order so that you can carry that forward against Atletico Madrid. And without Alisson, Shaka, mm -hmm. you expect them to be able to get past Bournemouth, don't you? But yes. what about Atletico Madrid with, that, with that, Adrian that's a tough ask. Listen, if you had asked me that very question a week of football today, mm. it's hard to replace that regardless of, of how good your number two is. This is a huge ask for Liverpool. Can I just say, though, that if Liverpool are able to do the things that we've come to expect from Liverpool with that intensity in the midfield, creating turnovers and forcing those turnovers and from there creating chances themselves, putting away opportunities, defensively solid, then <clears throat> there's very little need for Allison right. Right. against Bournemouth in particular. And if indeed Atletico Madrid comes into Anfield and you squeeze the life out of Atletico Madrid and you force them into mistakes... Atletico Madrid is not good enough to break it down unless you are not playing with that sort of high level of intensity of energy that we come to expect from Liverpool. So this is really about the performance of Liverpool as a whole rather than the goalkeeper. The on-field on players, they have to be at their best. And if they are, then Atletico Madrid has no chance. Mm. This is about Liverpool and really going <laughs> back to the things that make them successful. Yeah, Ian, how do you see it? With uh, Adrian in goal against Atletico Madrid, how do you rate their chances of over overturning this one-goal deficit? Not as good as they were with Alisson in goal because, of course, the whole dynamic of that tie, if Atletico Madrid can nick an away goal, well, then Liverpool are in quite deep trouble. Of course, they've had some great European nights. I think the, th the thing I'd worry about a little bit with Liverpool is you can't... Any of the pros will tell you this. You can't just switch form off and on. And in the last four games, they haven't looked themselves. It is four games now because the other game in that run was the West Ham game mm. when they probably could have slipped to a shock home defeat there, but for two uncharacteristic errors from Lucas Fabianski, uh, the goalkeeper. West Ham might have won that game. They were looking quite comfortable. They got gifted uh, that equaliser, Liverpool, and went on to win it. So they are off the boil. I'm sure there have been a few meetings and a lot of truths told there, and they'll want to get right back on song mm. in this Bournemouth game. So, how do you see it going? Uh, they are the European champions, mm -hmm. after all. Let's not forget, they did overturn uh, a 3-0... Deficit against Barcelona mm -hmm. last year. Can they get this done? I, against Atletico Madrid, yeah. I'm pretty sure we're talking, and not just Bournemouth. Yes. But, uh, again. Yeah, can they overturn a result against Bournemouth, I, No, but, I, but, but to, that, to that point, I, I think a lot hinges on the Bournemouth performance. Right. Mm. I think the other results are easy to excuse. Mm. We had twice the possession against Atletico Madrid. We were away. We're still in this tie. Watford was a blip. Chelsea, we made changes. Now, all of a sudden, if you put your full strength team back out against Bournemouth and you struggle, mm. it, it really takes uh, the, the confidence of those players on mm. the park, regardless of where, what Jurgen Klopp is trying to sell it within, the, within the dressing room, the players start to, start to doubt and, and worry that they're, that they're in a real slump. And then all of a sudden, Atletico Madrid um, have, have the onus on you. You put together a good performance, which I, I see no reason why they shouldn't. I, I think Liverpool have more than enough to overturn, overturn the results. Who, against who's in the quarterfinal, Ali? Liverpool. Liverpool, and, Liverpool and, overturn. Well, you yeah. can't sell me on magical nights at Anfield and then Atletico Madrid <laughs> come in here and do something special. I, I really do think that Liverpool's best mm. will certainly take out Atletico Madrid, regardless of whatever Atletico Madrid has to offer. Mm. Remember that second leg on Wednesday. Uh, so much to look forward to. Even that I, space shuttle. I bit, thought yeah. that there was going to be a cake today that Craig is on vacation. No, are, are we not that, celebrating that? That is, that is, what? That is worthy of hey. the streamers, <laughs> balloons, yeah. and all of the uh, all of the above. Uh, thank you, you, you very much. Some of that. Indeed, gents. So uh, we are off. We will return uh, tomorrow's <clears> show <throat> reviewing <clears throat> all the action. And okay. away we go for another uh, <clears throat> multifaceted <clears throat> edition. But Ian Dark clearing his throat in yeah. the background there. Uh -huh. that, that's, that's who it is, yes. <laughs> yes, Ian is clearing his throat. It's just as well, because the first question is directly to Ian. Oh, eh? well, well. Uh, perfectly timed. My apologies. Sergio wants to know uh, whether VAR, Ian, has ruined your enjoyment of commentary. 
Uh, no, not ruined it, but uh, does it dilute the drama? Undoubtedly, yeah, it does. And it means that sometimes you can get very excited about a goal and then a minute <laughs> later you've got to say, well, actually, it didn't count. Um, so they've got to have a long, hard look at it this summer to see if they can make it better. Yeah. Can, you I, imagine, can you imagine if... Uh, Ian had gone with his staple, go, go, USA, <laughs> and then they had brought it back. <laughs> it, it, it wouldn't have been the same. Oh, history. Yeah. Can, can I just say, VAR hasn't ruined my enjoyment of Ian's commentary. No, oh, nothing wow. will no, ruin that. Come on, no, that's, you know, nothing will ruin that. We're talking about a legend here. Well, oh, right, I'll tell you what. <laughs> It does I'll lead to a ten dollars later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make it hundred. <laughs> hey, I said something too, so multiply it. <laughs> no, 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 it's all, all fine. Uh, Jake, thoughts on uh, Raheem Sterling's form? Where are the headlines like last year when Salah went through a scoring drought? Uh, I don't think Sterling's escaped scrutiny, is he? I mean. Well, I'm trying to. I'm... Well, I think Jake is bitter about the criticism of Salah yes. at some point. He's saying last Salah year. Got... Also, not enough. So Salah we, got we have been critical it. enough of Raheem Sterling. Salah got blasted for somehow re re regressing from a 40 goal season. Come on, Jake. And uh, apparently, we haven't blasted Sterling enough. For... Oh. Come on, Jake. <laughs> Jake that's that's Jake. where your enjoyment is hinged. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he's. That and VAR. Right. Very oh, come on, Jake. <laughs> yeah. the, the fact that he's hanging on to where yeah, we were... I'm not even adding to this, Jake. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Ian, any validity to this, this question at all? I think Jake might have a bit of a vindictive streak. <laughs> <to> be <perfect>. yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, yeah, all right. He's gone off the boil a little bit, but generally over the last couple of years, he's been pretty terrific. Mm. <laughs> Mike Coughlin, meanwhile, a very topical question. Did you ever play or commentate with the flu? With the flu? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sure you did. That, mm. that is not grounds for you missing no. a game. No. No. You get, Hold on. You get the That's not grounds for most people. Well, <laughs> well I would say, well. We all have yeah. played with those. Well, yes. Of, you know, the slightest, they're yeah. out. Yeah. But, yeah, no, you play it. Yeah. Get the uh, get the night nurse and the Alka Seltzer down you and yeah. uh, out, out you, you go. So you can put your uh, Vicks on your shirt, anything, uh -huh. yeah, all that, yeah, whatever it takes. And you get through the ninety minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that collapse. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Ian, I'm sure you've had uh, experience. I know I have with with tissues yeah. at the ready. Uh, you know, going everywhere. Yeah, I've done lots of games. In one game, I'll be honest with you, it was a League Cup tie. I actually completely lost my voice. I was doing it with Tony Gale, the former West Ham defender, and basically I had to make gestures towards him to just carry on. Um, I drank water for about 10 minutes and then resumed the action yes. at that point. And guess what? Nobody noticed. <laughs> We've all been that, there, Ian, well, definitely. That's, that's how good his comment is. Yes. That's, right. well, that's, that, that's how it is. Even yeah. drinking water yes, it yeah. is music to It's, it's mesmerising. Yeah. <laughs> now, we had uh, Shaka's uh, shark bake back yesterday. <laughs> Shaka's Maserati is uh, uh, making... Uh, Making an appearance uh, today with a question for Ian. Ian, who's your favourite commentator to commentate games with? And what were your thoughts on Fury versus Wilder 2? Oh, careful here, Ian. Yeah, that's what? kind of putting you on spot. Yeah, you're I, I was going to say, that, 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 those are two quite different questions. <laughs> Very different. But. Um, I liked the one about the Maserati better, I think. Uh, <laughs> but um, I wish I had one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Second, no, um, no, I'm not going to get into that because I honestly, um, no. yeah, you name names and then people get get right. hurt. But um, I enjoy commentating with a lot of people, a lot of good pros who always do their homework and do a great job. And we, we, you know, you know this, Adrian, because yeah. you've been behind the microphone at games as well. You know, you appreciate the help you get from the guys who actually played the game at the top level. Yes. They oh, know what was what the other question? About. Fury, uh, Fury Wilder, Wilder, too. Yeah. Great performance by Fury. Brilliant performance. Yes. Indeed. You know, I'm, I'm a little hurt here. That, no, he didn't, that he didn't... Well, because I have commentated games with Ian. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, I don't think well, I've commentated games with Ian. Well, one of the great co-commentators with uh, me. Uh, <laughs> You're one of them, Alex. All right. Well, thank you, Ian. I appreciate it. It's a little yes. late now. So, uh, <laughs> we, had to look, we had to go to VAR for that one. <laughs> you can't win those ones. You can't win <laughs> 
What would we have done for a living if we weren't footballers or football commentators? Asks. Uh, what would we have done? Or what, what would we have would, liked? What, what would done? we have done? What, what would we realistically I, I would have, have done? I would I have liked to design cars. I'm into yeah. cars. There's your mentality again. I did. I did engineering at uh, mechanical engineering at school with that in mind. Mm. Yeah. I would have loved to have uh, been a professional golfer. Mm. There's still time, by the way. Uh, it's not going to happen. Still, it's, it's, yeah. not, it's not going to happen. I'm, See, I'm, I'm senior a, tour. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a recreational golfer. Yeah. I've uh, seen your handicap coming down. Well, you, you, well that's all right. You got the senior tour already. What kind of golf am I? Huh? You're a rec What kind of golf am I? You are the. Uh, the arsenal of golf. <laughs> <laughs> Never quite. Please the, explain, the, please well, explain the, to uh, the, everybody yeah. out there. The front nine, pretty good. People start to believe. And then the back nine happens. Right. <laughs> Yeah. The dream is over. <laughs> <laughs> Europa League, here I come. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Hanging on to Europa League. <laughs> the arsenal of golf. Check out. Uh, so, Ian, in an alternative universe, what would uh, Mr. Dark have been doing for a living? Uh, well, that's a very good question. Probably unemployed. Um, <laughs> on, on the golf front, I remember playing with uh, Shaka, who hit the ball a mile, but not always in the right direction. Yeah. As for Ali, uh, the reports I hear, I've never played with Ali yet, but I hear oh. he's made such good progress that he could realise that dream of being a pro <laughs> golfer. I, I, think, <laughs> well, I think the arc uh. of progress is heading only in one direction, oh, with man. having watched Moreno up close. I'm going to get lessons with you, him. Hey, you, hey, you know, this is a very sad moment, because my golfing partner... My, my friend Adrian Healy over yeah. here did not renew his membership no. to the golf club. And so, therefore, I have nobody to play with. You know who my options are? Yep. <laughs> yep. A Stephen Eagle. A couple of Scottish and, uh, and and golfers. And Craig Burr. Oh. Yeah. I should point out, I'm still going to be playing that, you, at you, the you, you, with you. I just, I, that's, uh, not as often. That arc of progress could be reversing <laughs> yeah, right. quickly. Right. <laughs> Quickly. Uh, finally, evil Sebastian Salazar is the uh, provider of. Uh, actually, someone with a bit of an identity crisis because he's also <laughs> Bolivian Ronaldo. <laughs> is, is Sebastian Salazar really the new Ian Dunn? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll answer what? that question. No. 100%. No. No. Uh. Ian, yeah. Ian is never nearly as angry as Seb is mm. for <laughs> the most minute thing. Right. So, no. Right. No. No, he's not. No. No. I don't think so. <laughs> e Let, let's, be honest. let's be honest. <laughs> There's only one Ian Dark. Yeah. Right. I mean, There's no new Ian Dark. No. Let's just no. forget all that. No. You know, one of my uh, great memories of the 2014 World Cup was actually going to see a Corcovado. Mm. Christ the the Redentor in um, Christ Rio. the Redeemer in, in Rio, Rio yeah. with Ian Dark, yeah. oh. uh huh, and having a drink up, yes, oh. up in the mountain, oh. yep, yep, beautiful. No Sebi Salazar yeah. at the top of that. No, 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 no anger. No. It was all relaxed and taking it all, taking it all in. Ian may have been may have been a little angry with our tour guy who was a little, <laughs> oh, no. a little inconsistent with his <laughs> behavior. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh, am I right here or am I making this up? Yeah, I think, I think it was a high altitude problem <laughs> <laughs> that we had. But uh, as for Seb, I mean, Se hey, look, Seb's the first Seb Salazar, and that's all right. he should want to be, isn't it? Uh, thank goodness <laughs> for that. <laughs> I, uh, thank one, goodness one, for that. One is enough. Plenty. <laughs> yeah. Plenty. Oh, where is Sebi? <laughs> haven't seen Sebi forever. Well, he's off doing the US Women yeah, the uh, the the Believe. Oh, which is probably why this question came in, because Ian does a lot of that. Ah. So, uh, Sebi was doing the game last night okay thus we get this this question so but okay. i think we've 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 covered it i, I missed sebi last night yeah well because we were in the studio <laughs> right. mm. most of that night yeah I'm <laughs> still a little bit uh I don't, PTSD I don't, I, after I, yesterday hey, we um, had we had we had sebi this weekend yeah this yeah. past weekend yeah what, right. what a weekend it was in seattle well, yeah. in seattle Whoa, oh, that's, yeah. that's right. just a full package <laughs> you got to everything going on we got to get you out of here you got a road trip on you